Hey everyone, welcome to the new version of SimpleCube. This is what I'm calling, at least for now, SimpleCube Ultra version 2. So to touch on that a little bit, I do really kind of want to change the name of this printer. Um, it's not, it's obviously not a cube anymore. And the whole point of this printer is meant to be a easy to build, inexpensive Core XY printer that people can build on their own time, you know, slowly. Uh, it's meant to be like less complex and give people the ability to build a Core XY printer themselves without having to spend um, maybe a thousand dollars on a printer, that type of thing. It's meant to save money. We'll go over a couple things like that. Um, why this is cheaper and it's meant to just give users the ability to build a printer that they want and customize it they want so first off let's start at the goal of this printer it's meant to be simple and it's meant to be cheap and a very customizable so what we have here is in my opinion the basics needed for a core xy 3d printer we have three stepper motor, full bed tramming. So you can see here, these are belt driven Zeds, controlled individually by three stepper motors. So this printer can tram itself. You need three points to make a level plane and that's what we have here. I went with belts because I don't want Z wobble and you can actually make this printer as tall as you want within um, reason obviously you don't want really really long belts but you don't have to worry about ordering a specific size of lead screw you can just order four meters of belt and make the Z as long as you want and um, these are constrained by linear rails of course so that's the Z works very well it's easy to use it's very simple to tension as well there's just one M3 bolt that actually uh, tensions the motor downward, which tensions the belt. Very straightforward, very easy. Extrusions. These are just the absolute basic extrusions you can get. They're cut to one size. Essentially no tapping or drilling or anything like that needed. So in this scenario, um, I do have longer vertical extrusions, of course, just to get the build height and actually make it all enclosable. But you can essentially go on Amazon, you know, if you wanted to, order up just some standard, you know, 350 millimeter extrusions for the horizontal ones here, and just some 450, 500 millimeter extrusions, and that's it. You don't have to buy custom Masumi ones drill and tap them, nothing like that. It's a standard, any 2020 extrusion you want to use uh, based on the size dimensions, you can just order them from wherever you like, AliExpress, Amazon, whatever. It doesn't have to be a specific um, extrusion. So generally there's a big savings there is the entire frame as you see it on this printer right now cost me around $85 Canadian versus other 3D printer kits where the frame's well over $200. Um, so that was a goal. I wanted to just use some standard sizes and some standard extrusions, so no drilling and tapping. This printer is generally comprised of two sizes. On this one here, I have 300 millimeter extrusions and I have 450. That's it. You'll notice the bed is just a piece of glass. There's no Mike 6 tool plate. There's no weird sized extrusions to make up some sort of platform, nothing like that. It's meant to be, again, very simple, very cheap. Saving about $100 to $150 just by not using a Mike 6 plate here. Um, I personally designed this printer to print PLA. Of course, it can print PETG. And really, I'm sure it would print ABS just fine as well. The entire printer right now is printed out of PETG. So I am going to be ordering, 
I just don't have a silicone heater yet for this. That's why I have painter's tape. Underneath here, there is a PEI uh, steel sheet that I will be using going forward. I just have to order my silicone uh, heater mat so I can apply it directly to my glass build paint. You'll also notice here, if you can see, there are two screws so you can remove the build plate if you want to do work on the heater or whatever it might be. Right now I have this glass plate attached to these 3D printed um, brackets here via VHB tape, which is temperature resistant to around 100 degrees. So that is a totally fine solution. However, you could probably use RTV, some red RTV to actually bond these two together. This bed is nice and rigid, it's not going anywhere. Um, Double-sided VHB 3M tape works just fine as well. Again, we don't need anything fancy. There's no need for spherical ball bearings or, you know, weirdness to that. Um, again, I'm just printing PLA. This bed isn't heated yet. It does have a little bit of room to expand and contract. Um, again, I haven't had too many issues so far because I'm not heating it, but there's definitely further testing that needs to be done on that. So, but again, your bed is not going to get out of whack that often. What happens is when this print is done, I have G-code that automatically docks the bed down at the very bottom. So it's level. The bed never falls and does anything weird. It always docks at the bottom when it's completed printing. So, so that's my, uh, what I've done for the bed here. Uh, like I say, it's mounted just with double-sided tape on all three points. I am using the Eva tool head. Again, the reason for this is to be very, very customizable and you can price this out in any way you want. The cheapest option would be uh, a Bowden style Eva. So you could you can buy a cheap uh, E3D V6 clone hot end and just a cheap BMG clone Bowden extruder mounted on the back and just run Bowden. That would be very inexpensive. You don't need any fancy stepper motors. You don't need a 36 millimeter stepper like this. I mean, you can order those parts from anywhere. Or you can do what I have here. This is a Sherpa Mini direct drive and I'm running a Rapido, Fatus Rapido. Again, you can use any tool head or any hot end and any extruder that Ava supports, which is a lot of them. So BMG, uh, LGX, LGX Mini, Bowden, Sherpa Mini, Orbiter 1N2, any hot end you want. You can use Mosquito, Nova, Fatus Rapido, E3D V6, E3D Revo. Again, whatever you have on hand. So you can make the printer as cheap as you want. The motors, these are cheapo generic motors I had lying around. I think one is a Creality motor. One is just a motor off of, ordered off of Amazon. These motors are just off of Amazon. For belts, I'm using just a you know decent belt off of Amazon. Um, and then I'm using bearings for all of my idlers. There are no toothed or smooth idlers on this printer. It's all bearings. Bearings are generally a lot more robust than idlers. The bearings are larger, so reliability wise, I wanted to keep it like that. So that's there. Uh, I'm using MGN9 rails for the ends here, for the actual Y, and I'm using an MGN12 for the X. So you can get a look here. And again, the printer is meant to be enclosed if you want to. You don't have to enclose it, of course. I am going to be switching back to these corners. So these three-way corners, uh, again, just cheapo corners you can buy off Amazon. These actually do work very well. They're nice and rigid. I don't like these corners um, for the point of it's less printed parts. We can get rid of eight printed parts. You can see here the print finished. You can see here it docking. So again, the print, the bed never gets out of skew that much. It's very, very minor corrections that the printer is actually making. So the print's finished there. So there's another example of uh, print quality. Here's a Benchy I printed out on this printer. This is in PLA. Very nice. 
So again, those are the main goals of the printer. It's meant to be simple, easy to build. You can take your time. You've got an old printer left over. You can harvest the parts from it. Um, the most expensive part probably for this printer is a main board that can support enough steppers to actually run the three-point bed tramming. So I'm running a Phytech Spider here or an Octopus. Big Tree Tech op Octopus would be another option. That's the most expensive expensive part of the build. Like I say, you can build it with inexpensive hot end and extruder if you want to. You can go expensive as you want on that. Um, I've designed all the parts here to be relatively simple and straightforward. They're not very complex. Um, like I was talking about, I'm getting rid of these. I just don't like how they attach this part of the frame to this part here. I do want a three-way corner that's metal. So uh, kind of ignore that for now. I still got to print some uh, mounts for the power supply and stuff like that so they can mount underneath the bed here, of course. Um, but so far, I'm actually very happy with version 2. Like I say, if anyone has any comments or suggestions, uh, feel free to do that. Do so below. I am tossing around the idea of renaming this printer to the Commoner. Again, this is a printer for everyone. It's a DIY printer that's meant to be uh, relatively inexpensive. In this form here right now, you're looking at about $600 US, give or take a little bit. Um, that's not every single little thing that is needed to, to build this. Um, that doesn't really account for bolts and screws and things like that, but it does account for most of the expensive parts. Again, users have the option here. If you just print PLA and you don't want a heated bed, you don't have to spend any money on the heated pad or a PEI build sheet. Just order a simple inexpensive piece of glass and put some painter's tape on there. You can print PLA on this printer, no problem. PATG even works uh, relatively well too on painter's tape. However, if you want a heated bed, you can add a silicone heater to the bottom of the glass plate and put a PEI uh, magnetic surface on there if you want to. Again, it's meant to be very customizable, so that's the idea on this. I am going to be posting more videos as I kind of slowly upgrade the printer and modify it slightly. This printer is essentially completed. There's not a whole lot I want to do as far as major revisions. Like I say, I do want to tweak a couple little things. Um, the disadvantage of using these corners here, you do lose a little bit of length. So I'm going to lose about 30 millimeters in one direction by using these corners. So I will have to update my build. Most likely what will happen is instead of 300 millimeter uh, horizontal extrusions, you would go to 350. So there, there is going to be a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking uh, and things like that. So again, please subscribe, uh, like the video. And if you have any comments, uh, put them below. I do have a Discord server. I will put a link in the description to join Discord. There's a channel for this printer. There's a channel for a couple pre previous versions of it. I have uh, my Voron Trident channel on there. There's some clipper help. This printer does run clipper, of course. And yeah, thanks again, everyone.